Okay, so Rolf, Voice123 offers these tiers for talent. So what is the purpose or what was the purpose originally of creating those tiers? Uh, all right, so the main purpose for that was we wanted to get rid of the whole P2P, pay-to-play uh, idea. We wanted to be a platform that is available to all stages of a voiceover career. And we realized we just had a one-size-fits-all solution. So if you're starting out, if you're part-time, if you're full-time, if you're in your A-game, some people use Voice on 3 passively. Some people use Voice on 3 for all their work. Uh, so we want to make it accessible. So it's free for, uh, you can start on it for free. And on top of that, uh, we wanted to make sure that we have global plans. Because I'm, let's say I'm from the Netherlands. I'm a voice actor operating in a completely different market than the two of you, uh, which means that I should pay a different kind of uh, membership. So that's the whole concept behind it. We wanted, to, instead of a one size fits all, we wanted to make it as customizable as possible. And ideally, we take it even further in the future, and because I think it's still, still right now, it's, it's a big difference whether you are, let's say, focusing on only corporate narration or only commercial. I mm. think that's mm-hmm. quite a different market you're in. So yeah, okay, that's well, the logic behind it. So what does each tier offer talent? That really depends on the market that you're in. Uh, okay. So it's the annoying thing is here that I can't give a straight answer. But the basic <laughs> concept is this: there's two ways. Uh, to get basically more work from Voice on the Three. One is to perform really well and clients uh, will let us know uh, by liking your auditions, basically. That's the performance one. And the other ingredient is that membership plan. The simplest version of that is the higher your plan, the fewer other voice actors you compete with. And that kind of information we show in your plan. So let's say you're an adult male offering US, uh, uh, US, US UK. You can go into the, temp- uh, the membership plan. You can see how many other people in our platform offer that that are paying members. What do you find, Rolf, are the top things that clients want in a talent? I mean, because you hear from clients all the time, and obviously you're trying to make the platform good for the clients and for the talent. Um, So what do you hear from the clients? Yeah, so we actually ran, uh, we continually run tests to see what people are thinking and what they're saying. Um, From our client side, we wanted to, we had the same question you had, like, what, what makes the difference between hiring you or me? And we always had the basic assumption, well, you just choose the best voice, right? That's what I would do. But it com- we realized that most clients who visit Voice on 3 or heard to- who ever purchased voiceover, so to speak, they are, well, I won't say easily impressed, but the, le- the standard of good voice actors are, uh, there's already quite high. You're a bit, you're, you already compare favorably to the person who was supposed to do it in the office. Mm-hmm. Now, it really depends if you go on commercial, of course, performance is always going to be important. But we realized that was not the most important thing for our clients. And they mentioned three things. One is the environment that you're in, uh, your audio setup, because there's millions of voice actors, but there's only thousands who can deliver recording without any hisses and sounds and with a proper environment. And that's already such a big differentiator. That's the first thing they look at, uh, because that's how our clients review proposals as well. They listen a couple of seconds, sound, no good, no good, no good, no good. Mm. That's how they make their first distinction. Mm. So you can do so much, I would say, even before you get into a coach, get a person that can really check the environment that you're recording in. And if you have a demo, make sure you can deliver the same standard demo, a standard of demo than the, uh, when you're in the recording studio or when you're on oh, booth. That's like huge. That, that's the biggest one for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second one is uh, ease of work with. And it's a big of a bit of a fake, fake uh, a vague concept. But the idea is, it's about the ability of you as a voice actor and as a professional to clearly communicate what your expectations are, um, clear about uh, rates. Uh, most people who are working with voiceover have no idea how that works in the first place, so they need to have some bit of guidance, not only in the studio but in that process before. How do you do rates in the first place? And uh, it's difficult to communicate online. So people who are savvy at the communicating online already have an additional benefit. And the third thing they mentioned is uh, turnaround time. So most clients have a deadline that's yesterday. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to record instantly, but I think it's more about you as a voice actor having clearly, being able to clearly communicate your availability and uh, what you can deliver with the same quality that number one uh, said. And then number four was uh, performance, the actual acting performance which means it's still very important. But apparently when making a decision, these other three components might be just or maybe even more important. Mm -hmm. 
That's great. Well, Ralph, thank you so much for answering those bonus questions. And don't forget to check out the full uh, podcast episode on the Atlanta VoiceOver Studio and ProVoiceOverTraining.com podcast.